Hello and welcome back to Aging Well, a monthly production of Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. I'm your host, Nathan Lamb, and with me in the studio today is Senior Care Advisor, Ann Keefe. Ann, so glad to have you here today. I'm happy to be here. Oh, excellent. Well. It, we always have experts on our show, but I consider you a super expert because you are in our Aging Information Center where people go for all sorts of great information. And today we're going to have a pretty far-ranging discussion about Alzheimer's, dementia, different aspects. So I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, I thought maybe we would start by talking a little bit about dementia, signs and symptoms, things of that nature. So, okay. Um, well, Alzheimer's is um, one of the most common dementias. Um, it causes um, changes in memory, behavior, and thinking. Um, it is the most uh, prevalent of the dementias um, with uh, one in 10 people over the age of 65 affected in the United States. Um, in terms of um, other dementias, um, it is the most, uh, Alzheimer's is the most common, but there are a few other dementias. Um, one is uh, vascular dementia which is, um, I believe, it's the second most common. Mm -hmm. um, it generally involves um, problems with language mm -hmm. and um, also managing activities of daily living. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's uh, several different types. Alzheimer's is not the only one. Right, right. So vascular dementia is, um, a, a type of dementia that often is um, caused by um, tiny strokes to the brain. Mm -hmm. um, it has a stepwise decline and uh, memory deficits are not as apparent. Mm -hmm. However, there might be problems with language uh, and um, activities that one challenging activities that one does on a daily basis. Mm. So there's different signs or symptoms of the different mm -hmm. types of dementia. Right, right. Another one is um, dementia with Lewy bodies. That is uh, less common, um, but it uh, presents um, usually with uh, visual hallucinations. Mm -hmm. And it can also, there can also be um, a tremor and gait issues, you know, walking issues where you might notice that first. Mm -hmm. Again, short-term memory can be fluctuating, but it's not as, as Alzheimer's is the, the number one first sign that you see. It's memory. It's memory. And then there is a, a lesser known dementia called frontal temporal dementia. And that strikes, um, that caught is in a younger population people between the ages of 40 and 60. And um, it, it presents either as problems with languages, mm -hmm. uh, language in that um, there's word finding difficulties, there's, um, you know, speech becomes more non-fluent. Mm -hmm. Or it can present as behavioral. The person might be um, exhibiting sort of um, in, an inhibited, uninhibited behavior, might be a, more compulsive, might be spending more money, might be um, you know inappropriate behavior. Mm -hmm. So that that particular dementia is again, it's not as prevalent. It strikes a younger population than Alzheimer's does. Now it's interesting. There was a pretty wide range of symptoms in there, but right. with some of them, are there instances where they get confused with like, people think it's a normal sign of aging. Oh, We're, absolutely, absolutely. Um, in fact, that's one of the most common um, myths of, of uh, these dementias, in particular Alzheimer's, in that it's, it, it um, comes on so slowly that um, people think that, um, you know, oh, it's just, you know, grandma getting older or, you know, it's an old timer's disease. Um, and everybody forgets, you know, everybody, you know, um, 
has difficulty finding word, but in but it, Alzheimer's is definitely not normal aging. Mm. And so what you by the time actually families do recognize it, it you know it, um, you're well into the disease process. Mm. And so um, you know to the point where someone could be um, you know repeating, uh, repeating uh, stories or asking the same question over and over, um, becoming more um, confused about time and place. Um, where it really shows up is um, when people, let's say, who um, always knew how to cook, all of a sudden aren't cooking because they have forgotten, you know, the steps involved in a recipe. Hmm. or somebody who is um, having trouble managing their monthly bills. Hmm. Those are the two areas where that, that really is, it's just beyond, you know, just simple forgetting. Hmm. Now, I'm, you aren't a doctor, are you? No, I'm not a okay, doctor, I'm a sure social worker. <laughs> I, 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 I wanted to qualify before saying this, yeah. but you, you do talk to a lot of people who are mm -hmm. dealing with these issues. Right. How does it normally get diagnosed? Okay. Um, so the first, the first step is um, usually the, uh, is an appointment with the primary care physician. Mm -hmm. And in that appointment, um, a medical workup that will include um, urine and blood tests, um, and um, to check and see whether or not there are some underlying reasons that might be causing these dementia-like symptoms. And um, such things as thyroid problems, um, such things as um, metabolic imbalances, um, such things as vitamin deficiencies, can mimic these dementia-like symptoms. Even depression sometimes can mimic like a dementia. Mm. So um, those tests are done in order to rule out um, something that could be treated because the, some of those conditions really are treatable and can be reversed. Mm. So let's say it's not treatable. Uh, they, d they determine that there's no um, there's no underlying reason causing the dementia-like symptoms. So the next step would be to um, make a referral to a neurologist and have some screening, some scanning done of the brain. And in that, they're able to see whether there might be some brain injury, such as caused by a stroke or head injury, um, and um, which can also inform maybe it's a you know, a different type of dementia, or it could be still Alzheimer's. Um, and for further testing, um, they might be referred to a geriatric psychiatrist. And geriatric psychiatrists deal with um, some of the, um, the difficult um, changes in mood that come about through some of the personality changes that Alzheimer's presents and um, they can do further you know take a further history um, of the of the, the person um, and in some cases um, a, a neuropsychologist can do further testing um, and look at you know visual spatial because that gets involved to a person's depth perception and their their vision sort of later on in the disease process. It does not sound quick and easy to diagnose. Um, actually, you know, I was reading something recently that said a really good physician mm -hmm. is, can, you know, if they do that workup with mm -hmm. the, you know, and a good medical history, um, they can, 90% accuracy determine whether it is a probable Alzheimer's. Hmm. So they can, so there's a lot of steps involved with diagnosing, but they can get an idea. But they can get a pretty good quick. idea. Right, right. Hmm. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, well, that's all for this segment of Aging Well. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hello, 
and welcome back to Aging Well, monthly production of Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. I'm your host, Nathan Lamb. With me in the studio today is Ann Keefe. Ann, great to have you here. Great to be back. Oh, excellent. So we were talking a little bit about dementia and Alzheimer's and other memory disorders. Um, and in the first segment, we talked a bit on diagnosing them and recognizing the symptoms. Uh, in this segment, I was hoping we could talk a little bit about how our agency is able to provide some help for families and caregivers who are facing challenges because of Alzheimer's and dementia. Um, so I guess, can you tell me a little bit about some of the supports that our agency offers? Absolutely. So um, we have a family caregiver support program that offers um, individual and family consultations, either in the office, in their home, um, or you know, extended conversations over the phone if it's difficult for you know caregivers who are working. Um, we have educational materials. We have um, you know dementia coaching sessions. We um, you know in some situations we can do um, um, conduct family meetings mm. um, for family members. Um, we also, um, uh, you know, can refer out to caregiver support groups in the area. Mm -hmm. um, we have um, a wonderful guide for caregivers that's put out by the National Institute on Aging and the Alzheimer's Association that provides um, really, you know, a very simple guide um, on any number of topics um, that are related to um, areas of um, where you might be having some difficulty, like, you know, how do I discuss communication with my um, loved one, with my family member, or how do I, um, if we're going out to a restaurant, what do I need to be um, thinking about um, to make that person comfortable? Um, we also have um, within the um, the agency, a music and memory program, which is really wonderful. Um, and that is a program, we know that music um, is, you know, very strongly connected to memories mm -hmm. and that music can elicit these memories. So um, we can um, find out what music um, is meaningful to that person and we can um, put a playlist on like these iPods um, and can provide them for that family member. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's amazing to just see that person come to life when they hear music that they really can relate to. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes y you notice even that um, someone who, you know, is kind of nonverbal all, all of a sudden becomes pretty, you know, talkative and can talk about, you know, that experience, that, that time in the past. Mm. Um, there are memory cafes um, in the, in the, locally in the area mm. that we can um, tell people about. Um, it's, 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 it's interesting. We had a conference on uh, dementia a few months back, and mm. I remember there was a segment on memory cafes, which mm -hmm. was very eye-opening for me. Um, and around the same time, we did launch the uh, Music and Memory program. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a couple things I liked about our Music and Memory program. Right. One of them was, I think there's a lot of adult daycare providers who mm -hmm. offer it. But mm -hmm. we, to our knowledge, there weren't really any other providers who would bring it into people's homes right. the way that we did. Right. And it's, it's kind of cool that that fits with how our agency is all about helping people do things in home. Right. And we, we sort of brought that um, in home for people. But mm -hmm. we, we did actually put um, mm -hmm. a feature on that in our most recent issue of The mm -hmm. Advocate. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. definitely at the end of the show, I'll give mm -hmm. people a little more information. Right. On, there's also a video that Music and Memory put out about their program that really explains yes. it better then we can. We can mm. sort of explain it. Somebody explained it to me, and I had one reaction. And we watched the video and see the video that they did presenting how the program works. Right. It was really kind of amazing to see how well it worked, that right. it really did help this person reconnect right. with these memories. <laughs> um, 
in a way that you know I didn't entirely think was possible until I saw mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, right, it's uh, it's an interesting program, and I think uh, we had a fair number of people who signed up for that right out the gate who were interested. I don't remember the exact number, but I think it was a few dozen people who were involved mm -hmm. with our adult family care program mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that were uh, curious about that. Right. So. The other thing I wanted to mention, um, Nathan, is that um, our aging information staff is um, teamed, by, uh, ha teamed with um, professionals who have um, very good knowledge of um, dementia and assessing and so we, um, we, you know, we can help that person navigate the array of resources out there because it's, it can be very confusing mm. and can sort of point the person, the family member, in the right direction and help them come up with a plan of care. Mm. So, um, you know, and we can follow that person, follow that caregiver and be there as a, as a coach for them when they, you know, when questions come up. So it's a, it's a very um, sort of specialized service that we can provide. It's probably that mm -hmm. guidance is really important when you're yeah. kind of having to learn on the job. I right. became a parent a couple of years ago and I, I learned quite a bit on the job very quickly. And I suppose right. probably being a caregiver, kind of the same thing at times. It sure is. <laughs> And one other thing before we go to break uh, that I just learned about, we do not have a memory cafe, but the, mm -hmm. um, we had a speaker that was involved with uh, mm -hmm. memory cafes across the area. Really kind of an amazing program for people if they're not familiar with it. Mm -hmm. are, are you familiar with the, the whole memory cafe model? I am, yes. Um, and in fact, we, uh, there are a couple of memory cafes in our area one um, that is just started up through the Somerville Council on Aging. Mm. And there's another one um, on Gore Street, right down the, the, right down the street from our agency. Um, I have those memory cafes where people who have the memory loss and their care partners can come and be in a very laid back, dementia-friendly space with music and art, you know, doing art, um, just talking socially with other people mm -hmm. who are going through the same, who have the same experience. I think two things that really struck me about it when we saw the speaker was mm -hmm. the, I think the two things was one, when you go in, it's not like they're gonna ask you about your diagnosis or anything. Right. You kind of just come in right. and do your thing. Exactly. And the other one was that to reconnect socially, mm. it's very difficult when you're doing, you're, you're sort of going into the caregiving mm -hmm. thing. Your life changes right. and you're sort of finding new things to do together. Mm -hmm. And I, I did hear some anecdotal accounts about how it was important for, for people who were going to the cafes because mm -hmm. it was an outing they could do, it was enjoyable. Right. Kind of, you know, replace things that maybe they couldn't do um, anymore. So it was, it was very eye-opening uh, to me to learn about it. I didn't really know what it was all about. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But it, it, it sounded really promising in terms of ways that we can support people in the community who are facing these challenges. Right. So that's all for this segment. Uh, we'll be back with one more quick segment of Aging Well. Thanks again. Hello and welcome back to Aging Well. I'm your host, Nathan Lamb. With me today is Ann Keith. Hello again. Hello again. So we're just wrapping things up for this episode. And I did want to mention that uh, Somerville Cambridge Elder Services actually hosted a conference on dementia a few months ago. And a lot of great information from that uh, conference was uh, written about in our most recent issue of The Advocate, which we put out three times a year. We try to include some really useful information for people uh, you know, some learning material, some features about things that are out there that's of interest. Um, the featured story in this issue of The Advocate was we had an all-star panel where we had an elder law attorney, somebody from a home care organization, and our own Dr. Rebecca Warner doing a panel mm. on um, common ethical dilemmas. Mm. 
-hmm. of dementia. I thought it was a really good discussion. Um, and we were able to sort of encapsulate some of the main takeaways of the advice that they were able to give uh, for people there. We also got a bit about the different types of dementia in there that was provided by our featured speaker, who was a, a doctor. Mm -hmm. And we also have something on music and memory. And mm -hmm. we also had something on memory cafes. So it was really a fairly, and we had a, we also had a speaker who uh, told us their, a caregiver who told us their story. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So it was really a really wow. fascinating, uh, conference and we tried to get a lot of this into the advocate the advocate is available around town for free um, if you go to our website under publications you can download it as a pdf and check it out um, and it's you can also get on our mailing list by contacting somerville cambridge elder services let them know that you want to get on the mailing list for the advocate uh, if you want to receive the next issue um, but that's about all the time that we have for this month, was there anything else you wanted to add? I just wanted to talk about um, just a few things that people can do to just promote like heart healthy, brain healthy. Um, things like, you know, remaining socially active, um, um, learning new, you know, learning new things, um, getting interested in hobbies, um, keeping your brain stimulated. Um, exercise is like one of the most important things um, that can really um, promote, um, you know, um, good brain health. Yeah. Absolutely. So, it's important. Yeah. And if people are facing questions uh, with Alzheimer's or dementia and they want to see what resources are out there, um, Aging Information Center, if you call, you might get to talk to Anne and mm -hmm. she'll be there with all the answers. You guys are amazing. I've done some speaking at different events where we talk about the agency and at the end of it, mm -hmm. everyone always lines up with all of their questions and you guys are great. I don't think I've seen very many times where it was like, there was like a couple times where it's like, okay, maybe I'll get back to you on that when we get a little more and I have a computer yeah. in front of me. You guys really are experts and the amount of stuff mm -hmm. that's out there that people can access, if it's out there Right. You guys know, and it's a free service. Right. You guys take the time. You really try to get to the bottom of how you can help. Right. So definitely if there's people out there who are seeking resources or need support or want to try to find some of these programs, I highly recommend they give. Right. You might not get Ann Keefe, but you're going to get somebody great on the line. <laughs> Absolutely. So I, I love the Aging Information Center. So I did have to include that. Thank you for Absolutely. that plug. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think that's about all the time yeah. we have this month on Aging Well. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, in the meantime, if you want more information and updates about Somerville Cambridge Elder Services, visit our website, eldercare.org, or also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.